Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the 980 Know It All podcast. I'm your host, Josh, 980 Know It All, and this is episode 101. We just, or I just finished episode 100 the other day, posted it. Honestly, I started that off having a list of things I wanted to touch on, ways I wanted to say thank you, and after about five minutes of recording, I just hit stop and realized it wasn't coming out the way I wanted it to, so I restarted the podcast and just threw the notes out and just talked from the heart, and I think I did okay. I think it turned out okay. I Obviously, I don't go back and listen to my own podcasts. Um, I do a, like a short amount, but I can't stand listening to myself. I know there's a lot of people out there like that. It just It's weird to listen to myself talk, so I don't. When I do go back and listen to podcasts, I'll jump over myself talking and then get to the, uh, you know, the guest, whoever I have on. And I usually can figure out what the question is I ask within the first couple seconds of, of seeing, hearing the answer. So um, I do that. I don't like listening to myself talk. I'm thankful that people out there don't mind listening to me. I, I know you guys don't come here to listen to me. You come here to listen to my guests for the most part. But you at least can tolerate listening to me. So I appreciate that. Uh, I'm excited. Today was a good day. I mean, here in the Northwest, the smoke is clearing. We're able to go outside and do stuff. My family's been able to go for walks a couple days in a row, which has been much needed. We've been cooped up in the house uh, for far too long with everything that's been going on, but also got contacted by uh, a college here in the Northwest that they're looking at doing some inner squad scrimmages in the coming weeks and they want me to come out and do what I do and take photos. And man, when I got that message, I was smiling ear to ear because I wasn't sure how much was gonna happen this fall uh, from team standpoints, from game standpoints, from me being out there to actually get a chance to, to photograph stuff and, and be a part of it. So just being able to get out there and have the opportunity to take photographs this fall means a ton. So if there are any other colleges, I know there's a few coaches who listen to me. If there's any travel teams that are playing this fall and you want me to come out and photograph your games or whatever, contact me. I try and keep my prices as low as possible. Obviously I got to pay for gas, a little bit of my time, but you know, just, just let me know. I'll gladly work with you because I just want to get out and photograph some games because I actually had to cancel my trip to Arizona. I was supposed to be leaving in about a week and a half. I was supposed to be driving down to Arizona for the Arizona Fall Classic, the junior one, and then the week later, the senior one. And obviously, I just can't do it this year. You know, I had big plans. I was going to drive down, then drive back to Anaheim, go to Disneyland with my family, then go to Phoenix for the last couple of days and drive home. And, you know, with everything going on, just just couldn't do that. But, guys, I, I'm, still, I'm still excited to get any kind of baseball in this fall because it's just – it's just been a slow summer when it comes to baseball. And speaking of baseball in the fall, right now I'm going to get a chance to talk to someone else that I've never met before, but they're a part of the Northwest baseball community, which I love baseball in Northwest. It, it means a lot to me. Today I actually have the head coach for Cascade Christian High School up in Puyallup, Brad Thorsonson. Brad, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So obviously, Brad, this has been, you know, it's been a chaotic year. It's been a, just out there, unprecedented in a lot of ways. For you, you know, what things have you been doing to kind of get your baseball fix and keep you going throughout this last, what, six plus months? Oh, well, we, uh, we tried to shove uh, a lot of the season into a little bit of time uh, once we were able to kind of get outside in, um, in the late June, July, and August. Uh, with our summer schedule, I coached the 18U Saints Elite out of Diamond Sports in Puyallup. And so um, we got to play probably 20, 22 games when it was all said and done in, in a pretty short window. So, um, and then right away, there was really no break because we went right into recruiting for our team next year and right into recruiting for all our guys. We've got uh, 13 guys are going to be 2021s this year. So we went right into that process, um, which we're knee deep in right now. Yeah, you know, that's one of those things where obviously we know a lot of guys maybe didn't get a chance to play this year. For the guys that, for your team that did get a chance to play this year, was there kind of a, almost a sense of relief as, as well as excitement for the chance to be able, be able to get back on the field? Yeah, I think so. I mean, gosh, we sat, we, 
the, the hardest part was especially for the, us high school. We thought we were okay. We're going to be shut down for about a month, mu- a little over a month. Everybody thought we were coming back. Then they were talking about a shortened season, still have opportunity to to do playoffs. And so there was a lot of hope. And then uh, as time went on, and then we lost that hope. And then it was like, well, we're going to play June first. It looks like we'll hit phase three, or and that was the you know everyone was thinking that, and then that didn't happen. So it was just this long, prolonged time of you know just disappointment after disappointment yeah i know here in in longview coast area you know the uh travel ball program that i'm kind of i kind of work with and help with we just we couldn't even be allowed to be on the field we couldn't get to the batting cages and all summer long it was just a it was more heartbreak every week it seemed like as we got our hopes up it just you know brick wall got in the way and guys would run into it and just kind of get down on it yeah, it was it was rough. I felt really bad for the guys. I felt bad for the guys that were all seniors this year. I had two at Cascade Christian, both kids I'd had for six years with the middle school program, and and to not have a senior night and just not have them be able to finish out their careers just it's super disappointing. Um, and I know lots of kids around the area, across the entire country, had the same disappointment. Yeah, and that was one of the things you know I've talked to a number of guys who are getting the chance to play college baseball but they still you can still hear in their voices that missing out on senior night was important to them because those are the guys they grew up playing with those that was their hometown obviously you grew up thinking about your high school and that type of stuff and to not have that you know that that moment that memory it really is it's it's heartbreaking to see those guys miss that chance yeah i'm still sad about it graduations all that stuff just yeah lots of lots of loss there for sure and then, you know, obviously for you up there, you know, getting the chance to, to coach this summer and at least get some games in and then jump into the fall with, with trying to prepare for next year, you know, that's got to be something that for you has at least been kind of, you know, keeps you busy, keeps you going. You know, I, I know for us down here with the team that I'm working with, we had tryouts um, in mid-August, and it was, it was really kind of a relief to have that and, and to know, hey, we're still preparing for 2021. We still have a chance. And we're still – you know, acting like everything's going to be back to normal in some way. Right. Yeah. No. No question. We were actually still playing when we were starting our trial process, so just everything just got all bundled up together. But you know, you you really have to in order to um, really have any sanity at all. You have to kind of just forget everything that happened and plan on this being a great opportunity. And, and, you know, we're getting back inside here in the next couple of weeks to start our off-season training. And um, you just go full full bore ahead, expect that there's going to be a high school season. Maybe it's going to be delayed and shortened a little bit. And, uh, you know, the, the world didn't stop. These guys all still need to go play baseball in college. And they need to put, you know, film on um, on their field level and all the different things. And so, you know, you just, you just kind of put the blinders on and go. And that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, we talk about all the different challenges, kids missing, you know, spring and summer and different types like that. But it really has become uh, a very difficult and unique challenge for the 2021 class because you got, you know, you got the dead period for NCAA. You have, you know, a lack of games, you know, the inability of coaches to go watch games. So video has become extremely important. And, you know, is that something you guys have really had a chance to – maybe you were doing it in the past, maybe enhance it even more nowadays? You know, it absolutely. Film is e- enormous um, for these guys that are recruiting that can't get to places or there's no games going on for them to see. Um, and, you know, we – the one thing I noticed this year is that everything sped up. Um, colleges, obviously, you know, their season ended and early, and then – they almost turned their focus to next year way, way earlier than, um, than what it was, you know, what it normally is. And so we, we started having college coaches come around. We did some inner squad stuff. And so we, our guys started getting offers a lot sooner than probably in years past. Um, right now we're at six of our guys right now, uh, verbally committed, um, to go play next year, mostly in the NWAC. And, um, you know, most of those programs are filling up their rosters really, really quickly. There's not a lot of opportunity. There's not a lot of money just with that extra rollover. The the trickle down effect is enormous. Um, you know, we have now two classes into one. That's something that doesn't just get worked out over the course of the next year. It's going to take several years. And so, uh, I'm interested to see how this affects things moving forward. But 
you know, we, we jumped on it really early knowing that we were going to be up against the wall, getting some of these guys opportunity. So we really, we really hit the recruiting part hard so that our guys could get some opportunity. And, um, man, I, I think I had uh, four guys in the last five days commit. And so it's just been, it's just been one success story after the next. It's been really fun to watch and so proud of all my guys for this opportunity they're getting. And, and you mentioned, you know, a number of your guys are going to the NWAC, which is a, a conference that I not only love, but I truly believe in with the way they develop talent. But you're right. It's been, it's been crazy because I know obviously down here at Lower Columbia that I, I'm close to, you know, I know some of the sophomores went on to play at a four-year school coming this year, but there's still a number of sophomores who stayed behind. The freshmen, obviously, they're now freshmen again. You have the incoming class. It's going to be packed and full, and, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how this fall is going to play out. Obviously, teams can't go play as much, can't go play as many places, but, you know, for the guys who get in there, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a true competition, and I like that aspect of it, but for those high schoolers, I mean, are you trying to get them mentally prepared knowing that, hey, you guys have got to go in there and it's, it's going to be a dogfight for a position? You know, one, one thing is our, our message to our guys and, and the, the same message from Diamond Sports has been for the last year when we really started getting these guys mentally prepared for what they were going to be up against, whether it's, you know, getting stronger in the weight room and really, and really just taking this, you know, to the next level for them is that, you know, there's, there's going to be guys that, I thought a year ago we're going to play college baseball that now are not going to get the opportunity just because of the log jam. You know, those four-year schools, you know, they, they had guys hanging back too so that, you know, they were trying to keep guys in at the NWAC, you know, because they, they were having log jams. So it was, it's a push and pull from, from every level. And, you know, I was, at a, I was over at a school with a couple of our guys a week and a half ago touring and, um, he told me flat out he's got 40 guys, 40 freshmen on paper this year. That's two classes rolled into one. And so that is going to be interesting to watch how that sorts itself out. Um, because I just, I just see some, there's going to be some really hard decisions that are going to come down the road for these guys, unfortunately. And, um, and at the end of the day, what it means most is probably that less guys are going to have the opportunity. And that's the sad part, you know, but not their fault. You know, nobody's fault that we're going through all this stuff, and it's just it's just sad. But, you know, one of the things we prepare our guys for is that baseball is, is just like life. You never, you know, you don't get to choose how things go sometimes, and you got to be able to overcome adversity. And this is just another step in that process for for them to learn and and, get, and grow. And you mentioned, you know, preparing your players. That's one of the things that. Now, I've kind of seen following you and looking at different things is, you know, you really have a focus on preparing guys, getting guys to to learn the game on their own in, in a ways like pitch selection and calling games. And, you know, how important is it for you to have your players be able to have really a, a baseball IQ that can give them the opportunity to see and learn things better than other players? So, okay. So I don't know if you got to, we can do this podcast for two hours or what, but I got, uh, that's, that's, that's probably the thing that's hits closest to home for me. So this group that I have that is entering their their senior year, for the most part, and I have 22s, and I even have 123 on, on our team this year. Um, but th this this group I started when they were when they were 12 years old, and uh, so this is kind of the the end of that group. And so two of our guys were seniors last this last year, and they're off playing in the NWAC. Um, but I only had two seniors, and so we really started this process when they were 13, 12, 13, 14 years old. And it's, it's really tough, especially in the baseball community, especially when there's money involved and everybody wants to win. And that's kind of, you know, everybody wants to do that trophy or the ring or whatever on the weekend. And so we took the approach to kind of step back from that and say that, yeah, we, we, we're definitely going to try to win everything we can. But we're going to turn it over to the kids in a slow process and really allow them to make decisions and, to really educate them on how this game is played. And, yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit in the interim, but that's okay because it's not about wins and losses. It's not about us coaches. And with the idea that we're trying to get them prepared to play high school varsity baseball. And, and that was the model. It's been my motto. I actually am the head coach of the 14U Saints elite program as well. This will be my third year with them, so I double duty along with my high school team. And so I'm in the third, this will be my third year with that group. And we really initiated that out of the gate at 12 
this last year at 13, I think they played about 25 games. And I'm, I'm not sure that I called more than one or two pitches the entire 22 games. And two different catchers. Uh, we just really, really worked really significantly with them on understanding what to call, when to call it, what, what's the hitter telling us. Um, I mean, I could, I could do a full eight-hour podcast just on, on that and how that works. Um, but it's really important, you know, obviously I'm a high school coach and I go and you know, I play other high schools and I watch and they call all the pitches, you know, most high schools call the pitches. They're trying to win baseball games and I get it. It's really hard to, to give up that power. Um, in high school, you really don't get to develop them very much unless they're, you know, around your summer program or something. Um, so you're, you you really just don't have that ability like you do with a summer team to, you know, we start in October and we finish in August. So there's a lot of time for classroom, and um, and we take advantage of that. And so, you know, that was one of the big things I hear from a lot of the college coaches that they come out and watch our guys, and they're calling the game, and they're making decisions. And uh, we really turned it over to them probably at 15, 16. And it really didn't really pay off until they were 16. We, we had a really good year at 16. Once they kind of figured it out, um, and so that's been really fun to watch. And, and again, it's hard to explain to parents when they're 12, 13, 14, and, and they don't understand what's going on and they just want to win because it's fun for them and everything. Um, but they get to see it down the road. If they, if they're still around, they get to see it down the road. And, um, I think it's helped our guys dramatically in the recruiting process, um, that they're just, they're ready. They're mentally ready. Um, and so now we, we work all our guys around nutrition plans right now and they're in the weight room. We're trying to get bigger and stronger, and then we'll get back to the, the baseball part here in the next month and, and, and get back ready for the season. But it is uh, it is a really, really long process, and I've talked to lots of coaches, did, did a couple of different podcasts about this exact topic, and um, it, I think the fact that I've been coaching for – we're getting close to 20 years now is – I probably couldn't have done this my first five, six, seven years. I wanted – I wanted to win and it was my way or no way. And it really took me setting aside the ego. It's not about me. It's really about these kids and, and not just saying it, but showing and believing it where we could take, where we'll take that turn and get the guys to where they're at now. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love seeing players who have developed that, that baseball IQ. Cause that's something that, you know, in college, I know I've seen, a number of guys who have amazing talent, but when it comes to baseball IQ, they just they just aren't there yet. And you see teammates trying to help them and, and coach them and teach them, but at the same time, when you're when you're behind at the college level, you're you're way behind, and you got to be up there. And having that baseball IQ, you know, it's got to be fun for you, obviously, just to see your guys, you know, to have the trust in them to know that hey, they might make mistakes, but they're going to make good calls because they know what's going on. Yeah, and you know, and it's a again, it's a learning process. I, I mean, I I think back to this year, early in the in the summer, when we, you know, I always say, hey, there's two of you out there, and I tell the, you know, we tell the, I'm a, my background's pitching. I pitched in college, and and so we as pitchers, we always want the catcher to think they're calling the game, and we know as pitchers, and we know we're calling the game, and at the end of the day, but at the at the end of the day, I want them on the same page, preferably in sync, but if one of them gets it wrong. The other one has to bail them out. We can't both get it wrong. And so when they do get it wrong, then we get to have a conversation, you know, and, 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 and explain what we're doing. And, and sometimes if it's been, you know, called wrong a couple of times, they get a little bit earful from coach. But it's all part of the process and learning. And, um, you know, we, we get our guys involved in charting and doing all kinds of stuff, even at the, you know, 18U level, even, even younger than that. It's just to really get them to start focusing on all the stuff that, is presented that you know most kids don't see because they're not looking for it and it dramatically helps them with you know baseball is so mental we spend so much time we we actually have a mental psychologist at diamond sports and we've spent so many hours in a classroom with him and this has been phenomenal to watch our guys grow mentally not just physically yeah, I love that. And then, few you mentioned your background, you know, is pitching. You actually got a chance to play in the NWAC. What was it like for you to be a part of that conference? Because that has been a conference, I mean, that I, all my life I've been around it and, and seen it. And it's been really awesome to see the talent and just the, the programs that are in here. What's it like for you to, to have had that history and be able to see it even where it's at today? 
You know, I think it's a phenomenal conference. I really do. We we have a, a little tradition inside of our program where we go to Hillsboro for Memorial Day tournament every year, or this year was going to be in Portland, but we stop off on Friday and catch the 1230 game in Lower Columbia every year, and it's a big Saints deal. And we, you know, there's oftentimes we know a coach or a player or whatever, and we get them to come talk to our guys, and it's just let them – so they've been seeing that for years now because, I, you know, that you think from the outside looking at it, you think junior college, oh, it might not be as good. But what they don't understand is that it's really, really good baseball, high-level talent. Guys get drafted out of that league every single year. And there's a handful of D1 guys every year. So it's I, – I've really, I've really loved uh, – I love being part of it. And I love, I love watching it. I love um, – I know – majority of the coaches uh some of them i played with or against um so it's been really fun just watching the evolution of that and you know that NWAC tournament every year memorial day is just such a historic prestigious thing i was fortunate to get to go there in 97 with them the college rangers and it was just really a great experience a big deal um so yeah i i really love it and i and and frankly you know Going through this whole process with our guys for recruiting, you know, the D1 is really hard this year just because of the log jam. So a lot of our D1 guys are going JUCO. And so that's only going to enhance this league for the next two years because there's going to be way more talent in the league than it has been in the past, which has still been really good. Yeah, and that's one of the things, and I've had to tell players that, you know, we're like, oh, I want to go play for a big college. And I'm like, well, then go to the JUCO route because, like, Lower Columbia and Everett and these schools, they send guys to the four-year schools. I mean, entire starting lineups go to four-year schools because that's the talent level here in the NWAC. And I love when guys, even if they ha are kind of forced that direction, choose that because after two years, they look back and go, oh, Man, that that was huge. I, I love the fact I got to play every day. I love the fact I got to compete and be out there. And it's just it's changing for them, and and I love that. Yeah, it is. It is a direct link to get to a, a D one or D two school where you can't might do that right out of high school, and just the the level of attention they can give you, the the hands on approach that you can't maybe get at the NCAA level. It's just – it's phenomenal. And, and some of these guys, you know, they, they work hard, but they don't really know what it's like to work hard until they get there. And, and some of them really blossom, and they get to go. And, and I always tell everyone, you don't have to be there for two years. If you're ready, your college coach is going to tell you. You can go after one year. We see it every year. And so you're not stuck for any, for any means. And, you know, and then you talk about costs and all the different things that you get to, to do as well. It's just – it's a great opportunity. And I just think – I think the world of it, the baseball is really good. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, for you, you, you mentioned you've been coaching for, for a number of years. What initially got you into coaching? Because, you know, although there are a lot of players who say, yeah, I want to coach someday, you know, it, there's usually different circumstances that get you into that. So what was your circumstances to get you coaching? You know, I just always felt like I was a kind of a team leader guy. I wasn't like the raw, raw guy. I was more of a lead by example type guy growing up. I grew up in Burien with the Highland High School. Um, and, and, and did a couple clinics when I was in college. I just thought it's just really fun to, to work with young people. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the biggest part for me, I got my first gig when I was 27. I coached a uh, Pierce County Babe Ruth uh, team uh, out of Bethel High School. And funny, funny story, I coached that for three years, took a, a team for three years through the Babe Ruth program. And uh, two of the guys that played there are actually assistant coaches for me now. I'm an 18 team and been with me for – one of them six years and the other one's seven this year. So kind of funny to watch them grow up now. Now they're coaches. But, um, you know, I I didn't realize the the level of commitment, the level of understanding, the ability to be able to explain something to somebody, having to be versatile because not everybody understands the same message. Um, when I The first year I started coaching, I, I really found out really fast. I didn't know a lot about baseball. I knew how to play the game. And I've been doing it a really long time, but you know, there's so many aspects that I just, just, I didn't understand, I didn't know because we, it wasn't a big deal, and so I had to really study. And 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 to this day, I, I, I find everything and anything I can I can get my hands on to continue to learn. And you know, things are obviously evolving constantly, and it's just been really really fun to um, to do that and 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 to to teach and to grow. My my favorite thing ever is is not just the baseball portions, everything else, the relationships, um, you know, the kids that call me for advice, 
you know, the, that kind of stuff where sometimes you, you kind of become a parental figure to them. Um, you know, we really let our guys know that we're there for them and we'll help them. With, we, we do grade checks and we do all the stuff that to help them become great individuals um, that is going to help them in their life. So um, I, it's just, it is such a, it's such a blessing to be able to just have a little bit of an imprint on a, on a person's life and hopefully a positive imprint. And so I've just, I've eaten it up. I just love it. And then for you, I mean, obviously, as a coach, you, you've grown, you've developed. Have there been other coaches you've kind of looked at as mentors, guys who have, you know, kind of helped you along the way, you know, shown you different things or just kind of even just kind of let you see what they do? Oh, man. I tell you, almost every coach I come into contact with either uh, influences me positively or negatively. Um, you know, and it's, you know, I've been at a couple different facilities over the last half a dozen years. And um, being at Diamond Sports, this will be my fourth year this year there. My high school team uses that facility. Getting to know those guys, you know, Stephen French, who runs the Diamond Sports, one of my best friends. Just sitting down and just, just story after story and listening and seeing how guys do stuff. I just, I can't get enough of that stuff. Um, whether they're, you know, coaching 13 you and you're, you know, you're an 18 you coach, it doesn't matter. It's all, there's always something you can get from some other coach. Or, or advice you can give to them. And so, um, and then even just coaching in games and summer games with against the people you don't even know, just watching how they handle things and or, or, or good, good and bad. <laughs> um, and so you just are just a big sponge. You're just soaking it all up so that you can improve every single time you step on the field. Yeah, it's one of the things that I love being around the NWAC because, you know, I'll walk into a dugout and, and the coaches will start talking about something they saw or something they're doing. And, and it just, the message they have, and it's so much fun for me just to learn and to listen. And obviously the NWAC coaches up here in the Northwest have so much experience, so much knowledge. And it's just, for me, I'm almost, I'm almost like, you know, at a loss for what all they're talking about because of how much knowledge they have. And I just love listening to it. I, I can sit there and listen to a guy talk about different scenarios in a game for hours just because it's fun and something that I could, I would love to be a part of. Yeah, it sure is. And, you know, you know and the crazy thing is you, in a season, you'll see two or three things that you haven't seen in, in, in either, either ever or in, in a long time. And it's, that's the thing. It always keeps you on your toes. And, you know, you're making quick decisions, uh, especially late in games sometimes. And you, a lot of times you're going with your hunch or, or going with what, you know, six to six to stay. Um, you know, we, we went to a Reno World Series last summer, and uh, we're fortunate enough to get to, to the championship game where we lost. But we won a, a bracket play game on a walk-off squeeze. And, you know, I wasn't sure I had the kahunas to call it, but I, I did. And our guy got it down, and our guy scored, and we walked it off and won it. And it was just – you know, looking back, you, you go, wow, what, what were you thinking in that moment? And you just like, you don't even think, you just react. And uh, that's what makes it really fun. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, Brad, before I let you go, last question I have for you. I mean, obviously, you've been coaching for a while. We talk about, you know, talking with other coaches and the interactions we have. What advice would you have for a young coach maybe is just starting out and trying to look towards the future? What advice would you have for them? So there's a couple pieces of advice I have. First off, uh, one of the big things for me is holding kids accountable. You can hold kids accountable all the way down to the age of probably nine. Um, getting parents, ho holding them accountable too. If you're going to have practice, you need to have everybody there. Uh, my, one of my biggest pet peeves is if you're going to have practice from six to eight, you wrap up at eight. You're out of there at eight. Like that is a big thing. Uh, I can't say how many young coaches want to continue to go on and on. And, and it's just – Kids check out. They're, they're supposed to, there's a, you're indoor and there's a clock. They're, they're checked out because they're expecting to be, to be gone. Um, so go hard for the time that you allot. And, you know, the, the, one, the biggest thing I've learned is and it, it relates to throwing. Um, we, we are really uh, strategic in how we do it, but we do a throwing program. And um, this 13U team last year, which is now going to be 14, I, they kind of fell on my lap at 11. Um, we had to let coach go in the middle of the year. And um, we put that throwing program in right in the middle of the season. It was in April. And in four weeks, how much further and harder they could throw baseballs because they just had never done it. So we do a lot of long toss. We, in the off season, we do a, we do a lot of flat ground work. Um, and we, we don't just 
say we're doing a flat ground, we teach them how to do it. We do it properly. Um, and then we do a lot of bullpen work where we chart our guys, even the young guys chart the pitches. And we really start explaining how, how this works and what's a good bullpen look like versus not and how, where we want to locate pitches and, and go through all of that. And, you know, I've, I've, it's not anything I created. I've, you know, borrowed and stolen and, and, uh, you know, follow all the guys that are really into that, you know, long cost stuff and bands. And, um, you know, now we're into the whole driveline stuff. Um, it is really good stuff. The information that is available for a young coach, which I did not have back, back, you know, 20 years ago, it didn't exist. I had to check out books from the library. Um, I learned that I didn't know how to teach, how to throw a curveball. I've been throwing them my whole life. That's just the craziest, just to show you how to literally learn how to teach it. Um, so just absorb as much as you possibly can. Um, set the ego aside um, and talk to people that have been doing it for a while because they, everybody will help. That is the one thing about the baseball community, the coaches community. Everybody is willing to help. There's no – I have not come across anybody that's like, hey, I'm not going to tell you my secrets. Everybody wants to tell everybody because at the end of the day, it's for the kids. It's for the kids, not for us. And so I've just really enjoyed getting to, to, to talk to people and know people and, and learn from everybody that I, I come into contact with. Yeah, I know. Once I saw that Mariano Rivera would share his his grip and his pitch with all the other pitchers at All Star Games, that's when you know right. that the baseball community is just awesome. But but Brad, I appreciate you being on here. I appreciate you taking the time. And man, I wish you guys the best of luck going forward. And hopefully, I'll get a chance to actually see you guys play come springtime. Yeah, absolutely, man. Love to have you out to a couple games. Absolutely. Well, Brad, have a good night and thank you again. Thanks so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was Brad Thorstensen. He is the head coach for Cascade Christian High School. And, man, I, I love when the focus of coaches is to not just help the players on the field, but to help them in their whole life and to be intentional about that, intentional about their progress uh, as a pitcher, intentional as a hitter, intentional as a student. And it just – I love that focus. I love that intensity. And that's something that really, I, I think – separates an average coach from a great coach because you know yeah you can teach baseball but can you teach them about life as well and that's a big thing that's why I love the NWAC you know and, and the coaches I come across in that because yes they want to win ball games but they care just as much about the guys getting their degrees becoming good fathers becoming you know all these different things in their life and that's what I love about about coaches and coaches who are especially who are effective at that but guys with that Another great podcast. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go eat dinner because I am hungry. So, guys, thank you for listening. And until next time, hey, watch some baseball. The playoffs are coming. They're only like a week away or so. So have some fun. Watch some baseball. And, guys, I will talk to you later.